Hey, hi everyone. This is Admin from Admin365 and today we are going to talk about how to set up DLP policy in Office 365. So let's get started. So the full form of DLP is Data Loss Prevention. And as the name suggests, uh, it basically help us to set up a policy that will prevent uh, any confidential or personal data of the company to be sent out or to be uh, shared with someone who is external. So for us to uh, create a DLP policy or set up a DLP policy, we just have to go to the office admin center first and we can navigate from there. Uh, it is present under security and compliance admin center. So uh, once you are on the admin center, uh, you just have to go to the security and compliance admin center. Uh, as you can see, it is now uh, separated from each other and you just have to go to compliance now because it holds the DLP policy within it. So uh, now we are here, we just have to click on show all on the bottom left and you will see the data loss prevention tab and this is the tab where we can create a policy as you can see we have a create policy tab here and uh, a custom policy in here as well so uh, as you can see it is enabled on the tenant I have created a policy already on this tenant so that we can see how exactly it works uh, it is pretty simple for us to create a policy and uh, let us get the overview of the policy which we have it here and as you can see it has it for all the location and the policy name is this the status is enabled so we'll just click on edit policy here all right so uh, we are under the edit policy tab and uh, we can hit next and it will show us all the settings which we have and even when we try to create a new policy this is what we see here so you can just uh, refer this as well if you wish to create a policy right away so you can hit next after you give it a name and you can select the location where you want the policy to be active and as you can see I have turned it on for all the possible location in here and if you want it to be on a specific accounts uh, you can just add distribution list with all the user in it and that will work for exchange and uh, OneDrive and Teams uh, you can add the account here as well and the for and for SharePoint uh, you can choose the sites which you want to have the policy on so after this uh, you can hit next and this is where you have to create rules under the policy which will basically serve the purpose of restricting someone so uh, as you can see i have a custom policy here uh, named eddd i'm not sure why i named it that but yeah i do have it here name this and the conditions are pretty simple as you can uh, read it right away uh, if a email or a document contains any of this sensitive type information and you can see the lists of all all the sensitive information here and uh and the content is shared with uh, anyone who is external to this company or organization and the action it needs to perform is uh, notify the user with the policy tips uh, basically it will uh, whenever we try to add an external recipient and with the uh, sensitive information it will show you a tip that uh, this has been restricted and uh, please uh, do not send it to external people to the organization something like that and uh, as per the action you can see I have the policy tip and then uh, restrict access to the content for external user it is only for external user and uh, 
uh, that is the rule you can create as much of rules uh, which you want however if there is a rule or if there are two rules who has the same condition uh, uh, the actions would be taken from the one who has action would be taken from the rule which has the higher priority as you can see i have only one rule here uh, you will see no option to move up and down but uh, once you add more rule uh, you will see that option as well and you can set it according to your priority and so this was the basic part however you can edit it here and once you have set up all of them uh, you can see here uh, the accuracy as well so uh, if you move the number down uh, from 75 or 85 here uh, it will start to detect more and it might also result in false positive so uh, the accuracy levels which you see here uh, it is advocate and you should go with this however if you want it to be more sensitive uh, you can reduce the accuracy level to lower than 75 or 85 here and uh, on the right you will see the instance count uh, like uh, how many times you want uh, sensitive information to be present on an email or, or a document to be blocked uh, it has to be one because uh, any data which is confidential should not leave uh, the organization so you can keep it one itself and uh, as you can see uh, it is the breakdown of the policy uh, or the configuration which we saw earlier and you can see uh, if the content is detected and it is sent to people outside your organization uh, you can select it from here as well if you want to restrict it to internal as well and um, and you you have to add an action as well uh, you can restrict the user or encrypt the document and uh, basically what i have set up here is to block the user from users from accessing the SharePoint OneDrive or team content and block only the people who are outside the organization. So if you if someone on the tenant is trying to share a document with someone who is external, uh, the external person will not be able to uh, access the document. And uh, here is a user notification. This toggle helps uh, the policy tip to be showed for the user when they try to use or send any sensitive information and uh, you can see all of the option here as well and uh, this is um, a main option uh, this you uh, this option you might require uh, it is basically user override so uh, if you turn this on and you have a uh, action to block it uh, action setup to restrict or block you might need override because uh, if there could be chances where you want to send out this information outside but your policy is not allowing you to uh, then this comes into picture uh, if you select user override or override option in the policy tip you can provide suitable explanation and uh, you can go ahead and send out the email itself then and that should be it and here you can set up the priority as i mentioned that there, there is only one rule so you will only see zero here but if you go ahead and add more rules uh, you will see the priorities zero one two three and so on and you can have this option to be turned off that is what I suggest so once you have all the DLP policy set up as per your expectations uh, or your need um, you can just hit save and uh, let, let us see how exactly it looks uh, for the outlook Alright, uh, so we have the outlook here and we'll try to send out sensitive information uh, to someone who is external. Uh, the sensitive information which we are trying to send out is, for example, IP address. 
and uh, to someone who is external and i was trying to send out emails here uh, with the ip address which was mentioned in the rule as a sensitive information so uh, as you can see we have the policy tip here and uh, once you click on show details uh, you will be uh, given the information why you have it here and uh, you can remove the recipient and send it to internal it will allow you that as well and if you have a business justification you can click on override here you can type in the justification here and you can just click on override And now if you go ahead and send the email, uh, it will eventually go and send it to the recipient itself. Uh, in case uh, you try to send it out um, directly, it will block your email and you will receive an email stating that your email has been blocked. And uh, it is because of the policy or the data which you're trying to send out is sensitive information. And let us check the behavior of it in Outlook application. So uh, in Outlook, if we go ahead and create a new email and we'll add the sensitive information. And we'll add someone external, a random email address just for testing. Tip. And uh, this is what it looks like in the Outlook application. Uh, you have the sensitive information and the recipient is external. Uh, you will get the policy tip like this and you will get a override option here as well. So if you click on override, uh, you will have to enter the explanation here and click on override and you will be able to send out emails without any issue. And uh, this DLP policy does take some time to propagate throughout the tenant. Uh, it works for the documents uh, for SharePoint and OneDrive in the same way which you see here. And um, so whenever you try to set up a DLP policy or whenever you have set up uh, the DLP policy in here, do give it some time for it to propagate the changes throughout the tenant. And even when you draft an uh, email, it does take uh, few seconds to pop up the tip as well so uh, do take that into consideration as well but if you don't see the tip uh, don't worry about that part it will eventually block the email itself so no emails will be going out so there you go guys if you have any question doubt you can let me know about it about this and do watch my previous videos as well or if you have any doubt question or if you want me to make any video or videos on specific topic you can let me know as well and till then you have a nice day bye take care